Hello friends, in this third episode of my vlog on speed painting Zombicide, I'm going to paint the three marines, Baraka, Jared and Magnus. These guys are heroes, so I will take a little bit more time with them, to make them stand out. Alright, let's kick off. I have mounted the minis on the stands using Bluetech and I have primed them using two different sprays. The major parts of the minis were sprayed using the Citadel Wraith Bone. But before that, I first sprayed darker color from the bottom, aiming towards the top to create gentle pre-shades, catching the bottom parts of the mini. I used GW Mechanicum Grey for that. Only then I used the Wraith Bone to create the zenithal highlights. I started with the white armor. I used Citadel Contrast Apothecary White to cover all of the armor plates and that created some nice initial shadows. To enhance the effect, I then used pure white and dry brushed it all over the armor. Nice thing about dry brushing at this point is that you do not really have to care about hitting the other parts of the mini as they will get repainted later. Here you can see the difference between the dry brushed and non dry brushed mini. It is subtle, but it is there, trust me. In the next step, I have painted the bases. I first covered them with black using an airbrush, taking care not to overspray too much over the legs. Chris Bacon in the Facebook Zombicide Invader group asked me to share some footage from airbrushing. Unfortunately, I won't be using airbrush almost at all in this episode, so I am afraid it is the only airbrushing footage you will get, Chris. I will film some more in future episodes when I will be painting more Xenos. To make the minis easily distinguishable, I decided to spray the rims of the bases with colors corresponding to the plastic bits that came with the game. I started with blue on Jared. It is quick, easy and it will help during the game. It also means that I have to use specific colors with specific survivors and I hope this won't cause any issues with the game mechanics. Please let me know in the comments below if you know better. Here you can see that I did a bit of overspray on the feet. Don't worry, I will fix that later. With the bases painted, I switched back to brush and using contrast Black Templar, I painted the guns and other details um, using the reference at the artwork in the book. I will repaint some parts, uh, some of these black parts uh, in metallic later. For the leather parts, like knee pads and straps, I use two different browns. Contrast Wildwood for knee pads and Snakebite Leather for straps and pouches. The helmet I painted in Blood Angels Red. And here are the contrast paints blocked in. You may notice that the wildwood on Jared's knee pads is shiny. That is because I did not shake the paint well enough before I started painting. But a coat of matte varnish in the end will easily fix this. Now for other minis I use mostly the same paints. Snakebite for pouches and straps, wildwood for knee pads. I painted faces with Decorath Flesh on Baraka and a mix of Decorath Flesh with a tiny bit of pink on Magnus. I have also used Militarum Green uh, for some details on Magnus. And now it is time to paint in the markings on the armor. You just need a steady hand, a nicely flowing diluted paint, not the contrast paint, and a good detail brush. I am using Windsor and Newton Series 730 for this job. 
I have put the paints on my wet palette and I started with the general shapes. I will paint the blocks of paint in several thin layers later. This will also give you plenty of space to correct any mistakes, so do not worry too much about them. A good piece of advice is to steady your hand on the table to prevent uh, your hands from shaking. Ok, so this is the Norwegian flag finished. It is not perfect, but looks good enough for tabletop. I'm just covering uh, the back side of the knee pad with a black. For the American flag on Jared, I roughly sketched where the stars will be, just by using a thin blue paint and sketching some circles. Then I painted in the most basic shapes uh, resembling, uh, resembling the five pointed stars I could imagine and I could paint. Going back and forth with white and blue, slowly fixing, um, slowly shaping the paint uh, to, to my liking and to the shape of the star. All right, and here we have the designs painted. It is now time to fix uh, the overspray on the legs. I have mixed some off-white using bleached bone, white and black and painted over the oversprayed areas. I then also re-highlighted the parts uh, again with a lighter shade uh, of the off-white that I have mixed. Next step, painting the metallics. I'm using scale color black metal and retributor armor from Citadel because they look good and they cover very well, which is well suited for our speed painting job. Just pick out the parts you expect to be bare metal, like the parts of the gun, ammo shells, etc, etc. I have also repainted some parts that were previously black, like Magnus's server arm. Here you can see again which parts I have picked in metallics. In the next step I will wash the metallic parts with flesh wash uh, for the gold and black slash non oil for the steel parts. There is not really much to say about this step. Just use the washes straight from the pot and cover the metal bits to create shades and illusions of depth. It will also make metals look worn and dull, so you might want to skip this step if you want your metals shiny. Alright, and here we have the marines ready for battle in a nice tabletop quality. But I decided to go further and destroy the paint by adding some battle damage and weathering. Starting with a chipping on the armor. I did a test run on Magnus, you can check it out and it looks pretty okay. I will demonstrate on Baraka how I did that. I used a sponge and a mix of brown and black. First dip the sponge in the paint, then get rid of uh, most of the paint on a piece of paper tissue, just like you would do uh, when dry brushing. Then gently tap the rims of the armor with sponge on the places where you expect the most of the wear and tear would occur. In places that you cannot get into with a sponge or where you are afraid to damage other parts of the mini that have been already painted, you can use a fine brush 
and create the chips manually, like I'm doing right now on the Baracas chest plate. The brown chips represent the paint peeling off and revealing the base coat. For the biggest chips, I have used silver paint to demonstrate cuts that go deep into the structure of the armor. You just need to put a small tiny dots of silver into the center of the biggest brown chips. Alright, so the chipping is done and here is how our heroes look at the moment. Unfortunately, I managed to destroy the paint on Baraka's face. So I had to repaint it, but it was actually pretty quick. I also decided to skip the chipping on uh, Jared. He will have a nice new armor, he's American after all, he should have the best stuff. And also we will save a little bit of time. But I am not finished yet. I will add more weathering. And for that I will use the weathering powders. These are from Forge World, which I think they do not sell anymore, but you can use other brand. I used uh, a dark brown one, which is called Fresh Mud, and then an orange one, which is called Aged Rust. This will represent the dirt and Martian dust that has settled in the recesses of our hero's armor plates. I am first putting on the dark brown one. I'm focusing on the recesses and on the bottom parts of the mini, uh, like the feet and the legs. Occasionally I will blow off the excess dust that I have put on. Then I am following this uh, with the orange dust. Uh, looks like I have went too far with weathering on Baraka, so you know, be careful if you decide to follow this tutorial um, on your minis. Uh, do not put as much uh, of that powder than uh, I did. I actually uh, used a bit less of the powders on Magnus and even less on Jared. Remember, he's American, he takes care of his gear. Now, the only thing that is left to do is the final varnish. I am using one to one mix of satin and matte varnish and I always look forward to this step because it means that I can dismantle the minis from the handles and I can finally touch them after the varnish dries. And the heroes are ready for battle. They look battered, they look damaged, but stern and eager to mow down some Xenos. For the Emperor! I mean for the mankind. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed uh, this vlog, as it took much, much more time to produce this video than to actually paint the minis. If you have not watched the previous episode of this series, check them out. I have painted the tanks and the hunters, and the, those videos are much shorter than this one. So I am linking them in the uh, end screen. I will now take a little break and I will be back with the next episode by the end of the next week. So consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell so that you do not miss it. Ciao!